Welcome to another episode of Learning from Photographs at the Wyalusing Valley Museum. To learn more about the museum, visit our website, wyalusingmuseum.com. Today, we will be looking at a photograph of the bricking of Main Street. This photograph is pretty fabulous all on its own. There's so much detail to look at, but the story it tells becomes even more interesting with some outside resources. The information in this video comes from Borough Council minutes from 1908 and 1909, the 1907 Bradford County Directory, the 1911 Sanborn Insurance Map of Wyalusing, as well as being informed by other photographs in our collection. But let's start with what this photograph can tell us. Clearly, there is some road work going on in this photograph, and if we look at the materials that are piled up along the sides, you can see that the paving material is brick. There are enough architectural clues to tell us that the photographer is facing towards the river. Based on the perspective of the photo, he was probably standing on the second floor balcony of what was then Larkin's Shoe Store at the corner of Gaylord and Taylor. By zooming in on different parts of the photo, we can also see some signs for businesses along the street. There's a sign for the hotel, and just behind it you can see a barber pole. There's a livery sign further down the street. The building at the end of the street has a barely legible sign that starts with Rocket. On the other side of the street are some signs for Smith and Waldo. And the shop on the corner says Refracting Optician in the window. That gives us some clues about what businesses were on Main Street when this photo was taken. But there are also questions that this photo on its own can't answer. For instance, when did this happen? By looking at the Borough Council minutes, we find out that the brick paving happened sometime in the spring or summer of 1909. The minutes also let us know that this project involved multiple organizations including the Wyalusing Businessmen's Association and the newly formed Pennsylvania Department of Public Highways, as well as the borough. In 1908, when the issue of paving the road first comes up in the borough minutes, the Pennsylvania Department of Public Highways had only existed for five years. Their planning in 1908 included road improvements through the borough of Wyalusing. The state intended to pave the center 16 feet of what is now Bridge Street, Main Street, and Taylor Avenue. As more and more people began driving automobiles, dirt roads in town centers became less and less desirable. In the spring of 1908, after a meeting with the state road engineer, the Wyalusing Businessmen's Association approached the Borough Council about paving more of the road while the state work was being done. Instead of just the center 16 feet, they wanted the brick paving extended the full width of the street from gutter to gutter. The borough agreed to pay most of the cost of the extra paving and property owners along the route also contributed to the added expense. In December of 1908, a contract was drawn up with Mr. E. W. Whalen, the state road contractor, to pave the full width of the street while he was doing the state-funded work. The paving job was completed by August of 1909. Since a couple of the men in this photo are wearing overcoats, it was probably taken in the spring of 1909 while the work was in progress. If we take a closer look at the foreground of the photo, there are several men working in a trench. If you are familiar with other photos of this intersection in the 19 teens and 20s, you might already have an idea of what they are working on. As part of the plan for the paving, the borough had decided to purchase a cast iron watering trough, a round basin with a pedestal base that looks a bit like a very large bird bath. It's now a fountain next to the borough hall. These men are laying the plumbing lines which would connect the watering trough to Mr. Halleck's store. A public source of water was important for horses coming into town, but also helpful for automobiles. Early 20th century engines were cooled with water rather than antifreeze and were prone to overheating. Where did the supplies for paving the road come from? The bricks were manufactured by the Brick, Terracotta, and Tile Company of Corning, New York, which was owned by Morris Irwin Gregory. Gregory's company was producing paving bricks, building bricks, and terracotta roof tiles, and shipping them all over the northeastern United States. We know the bricks were made at his company because we have some in our collection, and they clearly have his name on them. 
The road needed to be regraded as well, being lowered by about a foot at the Rocket Building end and by a few inches at the Taylor Avenue end of Main Street. That is a steam-powered road roller in the center of the photo, possibly a Kelly Springfield, which would prepare the roadbed to make it solid and level. Steam rollers are pretty cool technology, so if you want to learn more, check the description below for a link for more information. And if you are a kid or have some kids in your life and you're not already familiar with the book Mike Mulligan and His Steam Shovel, I highly recommend you check it out. Another question you might ask is, who are the people in the photograph? We know two of the men because we have other pictures of them in the museum's collection. John G. Keeler was a local entrepreneur who had owned several different businesses, including a drugstore and a general store. He also served as Wyalusing Postmaster in the 1880s. He and his brothers were co-owners of the Rocket Printing Company. J. Morgan Brown owned the Wyalusing Hotel. Both men were Civil War veterans. If you recognize any of the other faces in this photo from your family photo albums, please let us know. We'd love to know more. We have some information from the signs visible in the photograph, but what businesses were on Main Street when this photo was taken? The Bradford County Directory from 1907 and the Sanborn Insurance Map of Wyalusing from 1911 give us a pretty good idea of what businesses were located in the buildings on Main Street when this photo was taken. The Wyalusing Hotel continues to be an architectural landmark in town. Just below the hotel sign, you can see part of a barber pole. The building next to the hotel is set back too far to be visible in this photo, but it held the barbershop of D.L. Taylor. Irving Alice's drugstore was in the next building, followed by a harness maker's shop, and then the First National Bank of Wyalusing. Although the sign is on Main Street, Lee and Snover's livery stable was actually behind the bank. The sign is just pointing out the alley that led you past the bank building. They were one of several livery stables in town where you could leave your horses while you went shopping. The next two buildings were joined together, a house with an attached hat shop. This combined building later became the Taylor McCarty and Sons car dealership and is now a community building owned by the Wyalusing Community Corporation, which also houses the Blue Heron Artisan Shop. The next row of buildings was located where there is now a small parking lot. They contained a drugstore, a recently closed bank, a clothing store, with a small cobbler shop attached to it. The cobbler shop isn't really visible in this picture, but if you look closely, you can see a little corner of the roof. At the end of the street was the Rocket Printing Company. The Keeler brothers purchased the printing company in 1894, which had been producing the Wyalusing Rocket newspaper since 1887. Coming up the other side of the street was a jewelry store, Wilson Brothers Meat Market, a clothing store, Cox's Tonsorial Parlor, that's a barbershop, J.B. Lewis and Company Harness and Hardware, which is the museum's uh, Main Street building that we're currently renovating, a confectionery shop, a dry goods store, a hat shop, Smith & Company's General Store, Wells and Howard's Furniture Store, Smith & Waldo's Daylight Department Store, and lastly, H.J. Halleck's Jeweler and Optician. Thank you for joining us for a look at this fascinating photo of Wyalusing. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to find out about other videos produced by the Wyalusing Valley Museum and visit our website at wyalusingmuseum.com to learn more about exhibit open hours and programs.